In this video, I'm going to teach you how to stretch your watercolour paper. It's really easy and it will stop your paper buckling when you paint on it. Now, this isn't a video about all the reasons you should stretch your watercolour paper and there are lots of reasons. It's a really good thing to do and I will make another video about that. But in this video, I'm just going to show you how to do it. Now, there's lots of videos online showing you how to stretch watercolour paper, but some of them miss out a few basic points that mean that uh, you can get into a little bit of trouble with it. Now, you'll hear people say that it's tricky, it's time consuming, it's difficult, it's a lot of fuss. This is absolute nonsense. Now, of course, when I show you today, it's going to take me five or ten minutes, but that doesn't mean that when you get the hang of it, it'll take you five or ten minutes. You can do it in no time at all. I guarantee I can stretch a sheet of paper quicker than you can make a cup of coffee. So let's go. So what do you need to stretch paper? Well, obviously you need some watercolour paper and you need a wooden drawing board. Now you don't want to have a drawing board that's really um, very smooth. So you can get these plastic drawing boards. I think Derwent do one that's for sketching and they're great, but you can't stretch paper on them because if your board is too smooth or if it's been you know, waxed or perhaps varnished, then uh, the tape is not going to stick to it. So you need a fairly rough wooden drawing board. Then you need some water in a little bowl with a sponge. I've got a large sponge, that's for wetting the paper, and then I've got the same, but I've got a small sponge, and that's for wetting the tape. Now, why am I using two bowls? Simply because I don't want to get adhesive from the tape all over the paper. The last thing you need in, this is one of the most important things, is the tape. Now, you can see this tape just falls off the roll, and that's because it's not self-adhesive, it's gummed tape, so it's sort of tape that becomes glue when you wet it. So now I'm going to point the camera downwards and we'll get on with those eight steps to stretching your paper and how to remove it from the board when you've finished. So I've pointed the camera downwards and the first step is to decide which way up your paper's going. Now it doesn't always make a difference. Some manufacturers the paper looks much the same on both sides. Technically speaking the side with the watermark is the correct way up if you've bought loose sheets and if you've bought a pad then the upper facing sheet obviously is the uh, is the correct side to use. Now, you can use the wrong side. It absolutely doesn't make any difference. Paper is prepared on both sides, so there's absolutely nothing to stop you if you prefer the surface of the reverse of your paper to using that. Now, this paper here, Saunders Waterford High White, um, it's, uh, it, it's got a slight difference from one side to the other, but uh, not really enough that I bother to check which way up it's going. But if you have got paper that's got distinctly different sides, now's the point where you decide which way you want to face up. For step two, I need to cut my paper to size, and I want it to end up about an inch or two and a half centimetres smaller than the board all the way around. So one thing to be careful with watercolour paper is you don't want to get your hands all over it because our hands naturally have oil in and it may affect the, uh, the painting surface later on. So what you're going to do is um, you sort of line it up like this. You can see I've got a little bit of space all the way around it and then I'm going to just put a nick with the scissors here. And what I'm going to do is fold this edge and then line it up with the side edge like that so that when I crease it I know that it's going to go straight across more or less. Now, normally I'm wearing some kind of cardigan or jumper because I always feel the cold, but I haven't got one on today. So what I'm going to do is just use a piece of kitchen paper because, as I said, I don't want oil from my hands to get all over the paper. And then I'm just going to cut roughly along that line. Now, it's going to be covered up at the end, so don't worry about getting it too neat. Right, and then I've just got this side here to do. There's much less to cut off this side, so I could use the fold method, but um, I could equally probably just do it by eye. As I said, the tape's going to even it up so it doesn't have to be perfectly straight. You just want to end up with it a little bit smaller than your board, like this. Now, having got your paper cut to size, remember which was the right way up and which was the wrong way up, I want you to place it right side down. So if this is the right side, we're going to face it down because what we're going to do later on is wet one side, turn it, wet the other side, and then the right side will be up. So at this stage, you're going to have it right side down. 
then you want to take your tape and cut it to the same length as your board now I really don't bother to use scissors for this because it's all going to get tucked in and wrapped over itself anyway so for this board which is oblong I want two this length and then I want two to the length of the sides like so for step four I'm going to wet both sides of the paper thoroughly now it's important to keep your roll of tape out the way at this point because if you drip water onto it you'll find that later on it, um, it all sticks together so that's not good so what I'm going to do is get this large sponge here and apply quite a lot of water to the paper it's really easy to miss bits and you might think that you've done all of it but if you have a look at it if you sort of hold it in the light you'll be able to sort of see if you tip your head sideways you'll be able to see if you've covered all of it so I'm going to do one side and then I'm going to do the other You don't necessarily want puddles, but you do want a significant amount of water on the paper. Give it a thorough soaking. Don't over rub it, because if you keep rub, rub, rubbing, then what's going to happen is you're going to move the sizing from the paper, which is the coating that helps your paint to sit nicely on it. So that's all you do. Wet one side, turn it over and wet the other. For step five, you're just going to wait a minute or two. Now, this isn't a specific, you don't have to put a timer on, you have to put kitchen timer on for three minutes or anything like that, but just don't stick it down the very instant that you finish wetting it. Give it a minute or two because what's happening is actually that the water is causing the paper to expand. Now, you won't be able to see it happening because it's quite sort of microscopic, but that's what's happening. And after you've given it a minute or two to expand, then what you do want to do is just sort of lift it and place it and make sure it's placed nicely on your board now at this point it will probably start to um to cockle and to buckle a little bit cockling is the proper word for what happens to watercolor paper but you can call it buckling or warping and that may happen at this stage now the bigger the sheet of paper the more of a fight you're going to have with it if it bumps a bit at this stage it doesn't matter it doesn't mean you've done anything wrong just give it a minute or two get it as flat as you can if you can't get it completely flat it doesn't matter so for step six we're going to wet the tape and stick the paper down so I've got my small bowl here and I'm going to get some water on the sponge, not too wet, but wet enough that we can soak these strips nicely. I'm doing it in front of the camera so that you can see, but normally I wouldn't do it near the paper because I don't want the gum to get on the paper. So you're going to wet the tape and stick it down. So I want you to do the long edges first, just because if it's a larger sheet and you're having a bit of a fight with it, it'll help you to get those big sides down before you put the smaller sides down. So as I apply the tape, what I'm doing is I'm lining up with the edge of the board. Now this tape is five centimeters wide and you don't really want your tape to be any narrower than that. I've seen tape sold uh, much thinner than that and it's not a good idea. I've also seen people online recommending that you put your tape, you know, a quarter of an inch onto the paper. That's not enough. It's not going to resist. When that paper starts to dry and shrink back, it's going to have quite a, uh, a pressure on it. So what you're aiming for is about half the tape on the paper and about half the tape on the board. So just doing the last edge now. And we're going to stick it down like that. Now for step seven, we're going to leave the paper to dry and you're going to leave it to dry flat like this. You know, you can place it on top of a cupboard or something out of the way. Now, if you've got cats, do be careful at this stage because what you have made here is actually a cat magnet and they will see it and they will sit on it. So if you've got cats, keep it up high or somewhere where the little, uh, little furry friends are not going to walk all over it. You will find that what happens at this stage, and it's already happening to this paper, is that it starts to warp and buckle quite a lot. And you're going to think to yourself, oh goodness, I've done it wrong, I've done it wrong. But all you have to do is hold your nerve. It takes several hours to dry. So for the first hour or so, you may find that it actually buckles up and becomes very wrinkled. Just leave it alone. As long as you dry it flat, then it should be fine. And I don't want you to use it for at least half a day. I tend to do mine the night before. I need to use them. And I tend to do several at a time. You can get... Um, several drawing boards and stretch some paper onto them 
and then um, you've got plenty to use for the future. Now once it's dry you can of course stand it up on its end. I've got a big storage area underneath my large table and it'll go under there but until it's dry I'm going to keep it flat and the reason for that is if it's if it's tipped up then what will happen is some of the water will work its way down and it may cause the tape at one edge to lift. So that's all there is to stretching paper and wasn't it easy. Um, here I've got one that I did a few weeks ago so you can see what a beautiful flat surface this is to work on. Now you may find that when you paint on it, if you use a lot of water, it will still wrinkle a little bit when you're painting on it, but it'll be less than uh, it would have otherwise done if you hadn't stretched it. And each time you let it dry, it will go completely flat again. So you could work on this picture, you know, seven or eight times in between each time it would, uh, it would go back to being completely flat. Now for that reason, you must make sure that the painting is completely dry before you cut it off the board. So here's one I've got here. It's just a little um, sample piece that I was using for YouTube videos, not a proper painting, but nevertheless, it's on a board of stretch paper so I can show you how to cut it off. So what we're gonna do is take a craft knife or a, a DIY scalpel of some kind, and you're gonna run the knife along. And what you're going to try to do is run it roughly where the edge of the paper is. Now you'll be surprised, you can usually just by the, uh, there's usually a dent, you can see where the edge of the paper is. So what I'm going to do is run it around there and I would normally put another board underneath as well because if you come off the edge you can obviously go into your table. So I'm going to be careful with this one and I'm going to turn it and cut like so. Do forgive any crazy noises that are going on outside because we have um, Storm Gareth. Storm Gareth is battering the UK at the moment and I'm in a wooden studio so there's lots of noise outside. So there you go, I've run that around the edge. You might need to just sort of give it a little bit of a, a tug and that's what you end up with. So there's your completely flat picture ready to be framed. Now you might be thinking to yourself, well how do I get this tape off? The answer is you don't. There's no need to remove it at all. Um, if it goes to your framer, then the framer will uh, be very happy because it's got more room to attach the mount. So the tape will be hidden behind the mount. If it needs trimming, your framer can do it. If you absolutely detest the look of it, what you can do is stretch your paper and then draw a line inside that area and then work within that area. But there's really no need at all. So you've got the tape there on the uh, on the painting and actually gives you somewhere to write. I write reference numbers on mine. You could write the date you did the picture or where it was. Um, you can write anything at all. So lots of notes can go on the side there. And that's your piece of paper off of the board. Now the board itself will end up with um, bits of paper all over it too. Again, there's no need to pull this off. Eventually it will build up to um, you know, about a quarter of an inch thick and start to become very annoying. And what you can do then is just sort of pull some of it off. But really don't waste your time trying to get all of the tape off of the board or all of the tape off of the paper. There's absolutely no need to do that. And I speak as someone who's obsessively OCD about lots of things, but even I don't bother to do it. So there's no reason for you to do. And that is how your picture should look at the end. So if you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and you can watch another video right now.